You see that donut? To your taste buds, it's heaven. To your liver, it's a hostile takeover. Right now, your pancreas just hit the panic button. Your liver's about to start hoarding fat, and your brain is setting you up for an energy crash you won't see coming. Let me show you what's really happening inside you when you eat too much sugar. Spoiler, your organs are basically filing a class action lawsuit, and you're the defendant. Here's what nobody tells you about sugar. It's not just empty calories. Sugar is a hormonal hijacker that locks away fat, overworks your liver, and leaves your brain foggy and craving more. In this video, we're going inside your body to see exactly what happens when sugar floods your system, why that afternoon crash hits, why belly fat won't budge, and why cutting sugar might be the single best decision your organs never knew they needed. By the end, you'll understand the one mechanism keeping you trapped in fat storage mode and how to flip the switch back. Before we dive in, let's bust a few myths you probably believe about sugar. Myth one, sugar gives me energy. Sure, for about 20 minutes. Then you crash harder than a poorly coded app. That's not energy, that's a biological scam. Myth two, I need to eat constantly or my blood sugar will drop. Wrong, your body has a backup fuel system, stored sugar, stored fat, and hormones designed to keep you stable between meals. Myth three, only diabetics need to worry about blood sugar. Also wrong, fatty liver, insulin resistance, visceral fat, these build silently while you're still healthy on paper. Myth four, natural sugar is fine, it's the processed stuff that's bad. Your liver doesn't read labels. It doesn't care if your sugar came from organic honeybees or a gas station slushy. Sugar is sugar. Here's the truth. Sugar isn't just making you fat. It's reprogramming how your body handles energy and your organs are paying the price. Let me show you how. All right, imagine you just crushed a large soda and a donut. Delicious? Absolutely. But here's what just happened inside you. The second sugar hits your tongue, your brain's reward center fires up. Dopamine floods in. But even before you swallow, your pancreas is already gearing up. It senses sweetness and starts prepping insulin. Your pancreas triggers its alarm system. And just like that, the countdown begins. Within five to 10 minutes, your blood sugar spikes hard. That soda had about 10 teaspoons of sugar. Your blood normally holds one teaspoon total. Right now, your bloodstream is flooded with 10 times the safe amount. Your body freaks out. High blood sugar is toxic. It damages blood vessels, nerves, organs. So your pancreas dumps insulin into your bloodstream like a fire hose. Insulin's job, get that sugar out of your blood and into storage, fast. Think of insulin as a strict security guard with one rule, store everything, burn nothing. Insulin unlocks your muscle and liver cells and starts shoving glucose inside. But if you haven't been active, your muscles are already at capacity. Your muscle cells hit their limit. Your liver tries to absorb the overflow, but glycogen storage maxes out at about 400 calories. Your liver reaches capacity too. Insulin doesn't care. This sugar has to go somewhere. Within 15 to 30 minutes, insulin hits peak levels. And here's what ruins everything. As long as insulin is high, you cannot burn fat, period. Insulin locks your fat cells. When insulin is present, those cells go into lockdown mode. Your fat cells receive the signal. Keep spiking insulin with sugar all day long and you never unlock them. So where does the excess sugar go? Your liver is now in panic mode. Glycogen is full, muscles don't want more. So the liver converts sugar into fat. Your liver manager is overwhelmed. Some of that fat gets shipped out as triglycerides. Hello, high cholesterol. But a lot stays right there in your liver. Do this enough and your liver starts looking like foie gras. You've got fatty liver disease, and you didn't need alcohol to get it. People who drink sugary beverages daily have double the rate of fatty liver. That's sugar turning your liver into a fat storage unit. Meanwhile, insulin tells your fat cells, especially around your belly, to expand. Your visceral fat receives the delivery. Visceral fat pumps out inflammatory chemicals that make insulin resistance worse. More sugar, more insulin, more visceral fat, worse insulin resistance, it's a vicious cycle. And here's the kicker, you might not see it. There's a condition called TOFI, thin outside, fat inside. Basically, your abs are a lie and your organs know it. One to two hours later, the crash hits. Insulin cleared all that sugar, but it cleared too much. Your blood sugar drops below normal, 
reactive hypoglycemia. Your body overshot the landing. Your brain is struggling. You feel it as brain fog, fatigue, irritability, basically like a toddler who missed nap time, except you're 35 and at work. Your body releases stress hormones to raise blood sugar back up. This is the crash, the 3 p.m. slump, the reason you're starving two hours after a huge meal. Your stomach demands more fuel. And what do you crave? More sugar. Because your blood sugar tanked and your brain wants a quick fix. Spike, crash, crave. Spike, crash, repeat. If insulin is the storage guard, glucagon is the emergency backup. When blood sugar drops, glucagon tells your liver to release stored energy. Glucagon finally gets activated. Your liver releases stored glycogen to stabilize you. Except if you keep eating sugar every few hours, glucagon barely gets a shift. You never tap into fat stores. This is why constant snacking, even healthy snacks, kills fat loss. Insulin is always elevated. The fat burning switch stays off. Okay, so that's one sugar binge. Now imagine doing this every day, multiple times. Soda with lunch, dessert after dinner, energy drinks, flavored lattes. Here's what happens. Your cells start ignoring insulin like you ignore your car's check engine light. It's been on for six months. You've learned to live with it. Your cell receptors become numb, so your pancreas produces even more insulin. Now you've got high insulin all the time. This is hyperinsulinemia, a one-way ticket to type 2 diabetes. One in three American adults has prediabetes right now. Most don't know it. The biggest driver? Sugar. Your liver continues packing on fat. It gets inflamed, scarred. This is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, about to overtake alcohol as the number one cause of liver failure. Your liver basically has a beer gut, but you never touched beer. Ironic, right? Your liver accumulates more fat. 25% of people globally have fatty liver. Most got it from sugar, not booze. That belly fat isn't just sitting there. Visceral fat acts like a rogue endocrine organ, pumping out hormones and inflammatory chemicals. It releases cytokines that increase insulin resistance, hormones that mess with appetite, and compounds that raise your risk for heart disease and Alzheimer's. Some researchers call Alzheimer's type 3 diabetes because of how closely it links to insulin resistance. Here's the vicious cycle. Visceral fat worsens insulin resistance, which makes your body produce more insulin, which tells your body to store more visceral fat. It's a metabolic trap that feeds itself. High sugar raises triglycerides, lowers good cholesterol, and increases blood pressure. But here's what most don't realize. Sugar affects blood pressure almost as much as salt. When you eat fructose, your body produces uric acid. High uric acid constricts blood vessels and makes kidneys retain sodium. That's a recipe for hypertension. People who consumed 74 grams or more of sugar daily had significantly higher rates of high blood pressure. And here's the scary stat. People who got 17 to 21% of calories from added sugar had a 38% higher risk of dying from heart disease. Your heart struggles under the pressure. Sugar isn't just adding pounds, it's shortening your lifespan. And here's the worst part, sugar is addictive. Lab rats given sugar exhibit the same behaviors as rats given hard narcotics. Binging, cravings, withdrawal anxiety. In some studies, rats chose sugar over potent stimulants. Sugar beat them in a head-to-head -head addiction test. Sugar triggers massive dopamine release in your reward center, the same area that lights up with abused substances. Your brain learns to crave that hit. But over time, your dopamine receptors become less sensitive. You need more sugar for the same pleasure. It's the same tolerance effect with any addictive substance. Your brain's reward system gets hijacked. And when you try to quit, your brain goes through withdrawal. Headaches, mood swings, irritability, these are real neurochemical responses. Sugar isn't just food, it's a drug you've been socially conditioned to accept. The food industry engineers products to hit your bliss point, the perfect combination that keeps you coming back. All right, I know that was heavy, but here's the good news. Your body is resilient. The changes happen faster than you think. Cut sugar for 30 days and here's the timeline. The first few days are rough. Headaches, irritability, intense cravings. 
That's your brain adjusting to lower dopamine. Push through, it's temporary. But even in week one, insulin levels start dropping. Your pancreas gets a break. You'll notice you're less bloated. High insulin makes kidneys retain water and sodium. When insulin drops, you shed that water fast. Some lose five to seven pounds in the first week, mostly water, but it signals your body is already responding. By week two, your insulin sensitivity improves. Your cells respond to insulin again, so your pancreas doesn't work as hard. Your fat cells finally open up. You're now spending more time in fat burning mode. Without constant insulin spikes, your body taps into stored fat. This is when real fat loss, especially visceral fat, begins. Your energy stabilizes. No 3 p.m. crashes. No sudden cravings. Blood sugar stays steady because you're not riding the spike and crash roller coaster. By week three, your liver actively clears stored fat. Fatty liver can start reversing. Inflammation markers in your blood begin dropping. Your liver begins recovery. Your brain's dopamine receptors recover. Sugar cravings fade significantly. Foods you thought were bland, plain yogurt, unsweetened coffee, start tasting normal. Your taste buds recalibrate. And here's a bonus, your skin clears up. High sugar causes inflammation and increases sebum production, leading to acne. Cut sugar, skin improves within weeks. Keep it up past 30 days and the benefits compound. Visceral fat continues melting. Blood pressure normalizes. Triglycerides drop. Your risk markers for heart disease and diabetes improve dramatically. Your brain stabilizes. And here's the kicker. Most who make it past 30 days don't wanna go back. Once you feel stable energy, no cravings, mental clarity, better sleep, going back to high sugar feels awful. Your organs don't hold grudges. Give them a chance and they'll reward you with energy, focus, and a metabolism that actually works. So here's the bottom line. Sugar is a metabolic hijacker that locks your fat, overworks your liver, crashes your energy, and damages your organs. But you're not stuck. You understand the mechanism now. Insulin is the key. That donut isn't just a treat, it's a hormonal grenade. Next time you reach for soda or a sugar-loaded snack, ask yourself, do I want storage mode for the next four hours or fat-burning mode? Your liver, pancreas, and fat cells don't have a voice, but if they did, they'd be begging, ease up on the sugar. Give them that break. They'll reward you with energy, clarity, and a body that works the way it's supposed to. If this made sugar finally click, hit like and subscribe. I break down fasting, fat loss, and metabolism without the BS, just how your body really works. Wanna see the opposite scenario? What happens when you don't eat and your organs thrive? Check out my fasting video, perfect follow-up.